Alright, so I'm sure by now you've all heard of ego death. Maybe you've even heard that if you smoke a particular substance, you can obliterate your ego and have a taste of the afterlife and even become more spiritual afterwards, right? Uh, yeah, this video may disappoint you. Believe it or not, ego death doesn't actually exist, at least not in the way people think. Unfortunately, it's a spiritual scam because it's literally impossible to kill your ego. In fact, saying that you've had an ego death is probably one of the most egotistical statements you can say, but more on that later. Most people have a big misconception of what the ego is and how it operates, and because of this, they end up getting misled and hurt in the process. Not only that, they end up dragging others down with them. Like Christ said, if a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit, which I'm definitely guilty of, so I do sincerely apologize to anyone that followed my footsteps, particularly at the beginning of my YouTube journey. I was very naive and I just, I just wanted to believe, man. Can you blame me? A lot of people think of the ego as this evil entity that needs to be banished, but this is not a wise approach. In fact, it will eventually come back and bite you in the ass, because it's not the ego that causes problems in our society, but our ignorance of how it works and our dysfunction functional relationship with it. No matter what we do, no matter how spiritual you think you are or how wise and almighty your guru is, you will always be tethered to this physical reality and your ego. In other words, we are bound to time and space, period. At least during the life cycle of our human experience. Ego equals mind, which equals awareness. As long as you're perceiving and having an experience of something through a subjective lens, whether it's through the normal physical senses during our sober state, or coming into contact with your version of God during a mind-bending 5-MeO DMT trip, you have ego. However, what you can experience is the temporary detachment of your persona, which Carl Jung defined as the social mask we present to the world. I think a more accurate term would be ego transmutation more so than ego death. Because the only way you can possibly get rid of your ego and experience true ego death is by actually dying. But you can't exactly come back and tell the tale now, can you? That would require an ego. People usually associate ego with the identification of self, and more so the unpleasant parts of the human psyche, which is what Jung referred to as the shadow. The shadow is a very valid part of ego, but so is all the pleasant, loving, and compassionate parts. It's not all bad. And just like the shadow, the ego cannot be destroyed. You can transcend it and disassociate yourself with your persona and connect with source during certain altered states, but you will always go back to the self because at the end of the day we need the ego to function because the ego is this social interface that we use to navigate through this realm the more you fight and resist the ego the more it will retaliate and reinforce itself this is what is known as ego backlash the optimal approach would be to have a healthy symbiotic relationship with the ego so that it actually serves you become friends with it and respect it. Before I go into the paradox of ego death and how it can be used against you, I want to go through the basics of the law of polarity if you're not familiar with it yet. The law of polarity states that opposites are identical by nature but different in degrees. All truths are but half truths. Everything can be separated into two wholly opposite parts and that each of those still contains the potentiality of the other. So in other words, to know white, we must experience black. Same with up and down, light and shadow, good and evil, male and female, so on and so forth. So as you can see, it's impossible to experience one thing without the potentiality of its opposite. This could explain why we're infinite beings in finite bodies, or how we need death in order to experience life. Newton's third law of motion states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, which ties in very closely with the fifth hermetic principle, the law of rhythm. So if you're actively chasing spiritual or mystical experiences, specifically through extreme modalities like psychedelic ego death, you are reinforcing the ego to grow stronger into a spiritual ego. And as we currently understand, psychedelics amplify our awareness, thus amplifying the self thus amplifying the ego. You are still perceiving this reality through a subjective lens and there is no way around it no matter what you do. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because you can still gain many profound insights by diving into the unconscious and the collective ego which can help you gain perspective. It only starts to get tricky when you believe that you've killed your ego and have had access to true objective reality. 
This, my friends, is the height of spiritual ego. And this is what ends up fucking people up in the long run. And you can't really blame them because having ego dissolution is a very powerful experience. But unfortunately, the ego can very easily delude you into thinking that this is truth with a capital T, especially since mental projections can feel very real. But as soon as you catch yourself saying, this is that, I had ego death, I am God, I am this, I am that, it's all ego. The ego is a tricky son of a bitch that takes advantage of spiritual practices, particularly through powerful mystical experiences. You know, it's like, ooh, now I can really enforce my existence by clinging onto these new belief systems. And no wonder we tend to think this way. There's a lot of darkness that comes with being a person in this physical world. So when the ego has the opportunity to attach itself to a more pleasant, solid belief system about itself and reality, it is going to take it, especially when the experience is overwhelmingly convincing. You know, but just remember that all truths are but half truths, which implies that all truths are half false. Everything is and isn't. You know, just think about it. If opposites are identical by nature, that means that there is only ego or awareness in different degrees, at least in this relative experience, which is where we all are. And then you've got to ask yourself, what is behind the desire of wanting to get rid of the ego in the first place? The ego. It's actually incredibly egotistical in wanting to kill the ego. And the irony of this is that it just makes it come back way stronger. What resists must persist, right? Just take lifting weights, for example. Me just doing a bicep curl is literally tearing the muscle fibers of my bicep. Because your muscle's like, all right, Tom's lifting these really heavy weights. I better come back stronger. That way I can handle the next load. But we don't call it muscle death. That would be ridiculous. Get out of here. Because we know that it's just temporarily breaking down so that it can rebuild even stronger. This is very similar to ego death, which can feel like the annihilation of self and being united with everything, but you gotta ask yourself, what is this relative to? None of us have died, so how can we possibly know what death is truly like? Who do you think is having that experience of quote-unquote ego death? That's right. The ego. And there's nothing wrong with this. You can still get practical results and have profound insights using the ego to go into altered states. But you got to remind yourself that as long as you're projecting sound waves from your throat box in the form of limited language, the truth will always be distorted and be a half truth. And what happens after an experience like this is that the ego just comes back more solid than ever. And the irony is that most people think that they're more spiritual afterwards, but really it's just another identification game the ego attaches to called spiritual materialism or spiritual bypassing, which is basically the ego using spiritual practices to strengthen itself. It's dropping the old mask and putting on a prettier spiritual mask made of amethyst crystals and ayahuasca vines. And I get it, it's fun to contemplate over these experiences, but the moment you return to the physical plane, you start creating illusions and wrong concepts to try and grasp the unknowable. The mind is always trying to make sense of what just happened because that's what it's designed to do. Because the truth is the ego can use anything in this existence for its own needs and desires. It's just what it does. And this, my friends, is the irony of ego death and the dangers of going into spirituality without gaining a basic understanding of the law of polarity and the nature of self. But it's not as black and white as ego dissolution will always result in a bigger ego every single time without fail. Like there are infinite degrees between the extreme poles with everything. It just depends depends on the person, their level of understanding, how they handle their situation and integration phase. But it is important to know that there is a distinction between being grounded, open and allowing life to flow through you and forcefully pursuing something prematurely. These two approaches are going to have very different results. And by the very nature of ego death, you're using force. You don't hear very often of people having an accidental ego death. And just to refer back to the shadow for a moment, this is why when you run away from those unpleasant parts of yourself, the stronger and scarier the shadow will come back to bite you ultimately. And you can see this with people who don't want to acknowledge and face a shadow, they usually end up being the most neurotic and depressed. So prematurely chasing ego dissolution via DMT at the age of 16 versus having a natural ego dissolution experience through many years of deep meditation and self-inquiry is going to have vastly different results. It's like an anorexic kid who's never lifted weights in his whole life, bench pressing 200 kilos versus Arnold Schwarzenegger who's trained his whole life bench pressing 200 kilos. One's gonna seriously injure himself, whereas the other is going to grow stronger from it. Same tool, different results. And don't get me wrong, ego can use meditation, yoga, even eating healthy to strengthen itself and reinforce its identity. It's just a lot easier for the ego to use psychedelics for its own agenda since the experience is so profound. 
But as the law of polarity suggests, the more profoundly positive something is, the more profound its dark side can be. Just look at a waveform. The higher the crest is, the lower the trough is going to be. Or if you prefer an archetypical perspective, where there are angels, there are also demons. But that being said, you can always use the law of polarity to your advantage via mental transmutation, but that's a whole other topic, and not to mention this takes a lifetime to master. But it does start by shining the light onto the darkness and being aware of all the pitfalls you can and will fall into. Ignoring it will not make it go away. Just like ignoring the laws of gravity will not save you if you step off a cliff. You can ignore the shadow and the ego all you want, but it'll still be there dictating your life whether you're aware of it or not. So to go full circle, unfortunately ego death is a scam, because you can't kill the ego, it's impossible. And besides, if the self and ego is an illusion, as so many spiritual teachers claim, how can you kill that which is not real anyways? It doesn't make any sense. Yes, there are infinite paradoxes in this reality that may seem to contradict each other at first, but all paradoxes can be reconciled by marrying the two opposites and understanding both sides. You know, and I've said this in the past, but we are all divine pieces of shit. We are simultaneously gods and worms. So instead of falling into the trap of being polarized and sticking to one side of the fence, whether it's left or right, ego or no ego, just accept the law of polarity and integrate the whole. Be in this world but not of it, or what Buddhists refer to as walking the middle path. You don't have to go to the extreme end of the spectrum to live a good life, whether it's a hedonistic approach to life or an abstinent one. And this includes extreme quote-unquote spiritual approaches like 40-day fast or smoking 5-MeO-DMT while meditating under the full moon with a shaman dancing with a cat on a stick. At the end of the day, you're always going to go back to your human body with all your insecurities, confirmation biases, cognitive dissonances, attachments, so on and so forth, and that's okay. It's part of being human. And if you don't respect the ego, it will fight back with a fuck you attitude until it gets its respect in a very sneaky way. The physical dimension and the ego is just as divine as the higher dimensions, and as soon as we realize that, the smoother the ride of life is going to be ultimately. So don't take the spiritual part so seriously and ignore the physical world. As dark as this world can be, we are still blessed to be on this once in a lifetime ride. So we might as well take advantage and enjoy the ride. Thank you.